All right, I think we're live. Hello, everybody. Welcome to another Earth Live lesson. I'm so glad you all are here. My name is Alex Fries. I'm a wildlife biologist and science communicator. I live in Blacksburg, Virginia, and I'm going to talk to you today about the wonderful world of bats. Um, just a little bit of background on me. I got my undergraduate degree in wildlife biology and a master's degree in environmental education. I have since sort of shifted into science communication full time. I work for Virginia Tech University as a science communicator and have also continued to work as a wildlife biologist on uh, different projects, a lot of bird projects and a lot of bat projects. So we're going to be focusing on bats today. Um, just a, a little tidbit about me. Um, we were all asked to share what our favorite adventure memory was. And I have to say it was one of the things that inspired me to actually be a science communicator and a photographer. I do a lot of photography focused on conservation. I was super lucky when I just graduated from my undergrad, I went on a 1000 mile, 70 day hiking, biking and kayaking expedition in Florida, all to raise awareness for wildlife and land conservation in the state of Florida. Um, I was super lucky to be able to do that. And it really inspired me to want to communicate science in a more uh, tangible way so that people can be inspired to hopefully go out and connect with nature on their own. So that's a little bit about me, a little bit about my background, but today I'm coming to you to talk about bats. So I think there are probably a lot of misconceptions out there about bats. And I wanna start off with just some general bat facts. I have right here a little bat. He is in uh, acrylic, but this is a real bat. You can see his little mouth and his little teeth. Uh, this is a pretty small animal. I mean, a lot of people, when they think of bats, they think of the really large, uh, you know, flying foxes in Asia. But in here in North America, a lot of our bats are just about this big. Uh, they uh, primarily feed on insects. And uh, if you didn't know, bats are the only truly flying mammal anywhere in the world. We have animals like flying squirrels and sugar gliders, but they really just glide. They don't have the true ability to fly. Bats are the only mammal that can actually fly. Um, a lot of people don't realize that bats actually make up about one fifth or one quarter of all mammals on earth. There are so many different species of bats. There are about 1100 species of bats around the world and they live on almost every continent. Um, some kind of general misconceptions I think that people have about bats is that uh, all bats drink blood. That's not true. Uh, the vampire bat gets a lot of uh, media attention and a lot of stories and you know movies, but a lot of bats actually eat insects. Uh, they're insectivorous. They feed on you know mosquitoes and moths and and other type of um, insects. We have a lot of bats that drink nectar. They will actually go and. Uh, pollinate flowers or pollinate different kinds of plants because they're interested in drinking the nectar. Uh, we have a lot of bats that eat fruit. I was talking about those big fruit bats in Asia. They are uh, some of the larger bats, the mega bats we call them, and they eat fruit. And then we actually have bats that even catch fish. They have really, really big feet and they'll fly down over the surface of the water with their little feet and they'll drag them on the surface of the water and actually catch fish, which is like really cool. People don't think that bats catch fish, but they totally do. Um, another big conception is that bats can't see very well and they'll fly into your hair. I don't know why movies decided that that was a really important trope that they were going to show about bats, but bats actually have a really good sense of the world around them. They use echolocation or sonar, which are uh, very high frequency, high pitched noises to sort of build a vision or a picture of the world around them. They send out those noises, those uh, high pitched frequencies, the 
uh, noises bounce off of the objects around them, whether it be insects or uh, trees or rocks, and they will receive the sounds back to them and be able to sort of uh, build a, a really detailed image of the forest around them. That's how they can fly really quickly at nighttime and you know catch the insects that they want to eat or not bump into trees. Uh, they really are very um, well adapted at figuring out the world around them. And if you do have a bat flying around above your head, it's probably just trying to eat the insects that are buzzing around. So bats do not like to fly into your hair. Um, one other uh, misconception about bats is that they all have rabies. So I know that a lot of people know that bats do carry rabies, but only around 6% of bats actually carry rabies. Um, it's unfortunate that a lot of the bats that people come in contact with do actually have rabies because they are sick. That means you found a bat on the ground in the middle of the day, or you um, found a bat that was, you know, laying on the ground or um, something that already meant that it was sick. So there's unfortunately, you know, a higher percentage of those bats that do have rabies. But if you have a bat that's just in your house, or if you come into contact with a bat in the wild that's up in a tree, it's a very low likelihood that that bat actually has rabies. That doesn't mean that you shouldn't touch them. Uh, so definitely, you know, don't handle bats, but it, it is a misconception that uh, most bats carry rabies. So I wanna talk to you a little bit about how we study bats. I actually, you can't see them yet, but we have a lot of toys around here that I wanna show you. So one of the main ways that scientists catch bats, I have my little Beanie Baby demo bat right here, is through mist netting. So we put up, it's called a mist net because it's very fine, it's very soft, and it's very like floaty, you know, you almost can't see it. So a bat is flying along through the forest, uh, either down a, a path or over a stream where the scientists have set up their nets, and boom, it gets caught in a net. And we, uh, using gloves and as myself a bat researcher and other bat researchers get vaccinated against rabies so we can actually handle these bats. We very carefully take them out of the net and we examine them. We measure how long their wings are. We like to determine what kind of bat it is so we figure out what species it is. We can look to see if it's a male or a female bat. And then very often what we will do is we will attach a transmitter to this bat. And this is a little transmitter it's a tiny little radio that we take uh, biosafe glue that will uh, dissolve and not hurt the bat. And we actually will glue a little radio transmitter to the back of the bat just like this so that the bat can still fly. But with this radio transmitter that is emitting a radio frequency, we can track it to where it is roosting, where it is sleeping during the day. Uh, this is a Yagi directional antenna. And this antenna attaches to a radio box like this. This is a receiver. And uh, imagine there's a cable kind of connecting these two. Once we attach that radio transmitter to the bat, we can attach this antenna to this receiver and follow the beeps that the radio transmitter makes. So that radio transmitter on that bat is you know out in the forest somewhere and we are taking this and we're moving it around and in one certain direction the beeps will be louder than in the other direction and so we can follow the beeps that are loudest in a certain direction and uh, after some uh, careful looking around uh, at different trees and figuring out where that beep is loudest we can actually find where the bat lives so imagine just a scientist walking around in the woods with this giant antenna trying to find a little tiny bat. So that's a very active way that we uh, study bats and try to find them. But another really important way that we study bats is through acoustic monitoring. So I told you that bats emit uh, echolocation or sonar. We can actually listen to that echolocation via bat detectors. So this is an active bat detector. Uh, these are great for going and listening at roost trees or listening at caves, but somebody actually has to be holding this detector and you turn it on and uh, all these little lights show up. And I wonder if you can hear this, but there's little 
uh, noises. Uh, it's very sensitive to sound and it can pick up those high frequency noises and record the bat uh, and what it sounds like. And based on what it sounds like, we can actually then go back and determine what kind of bat it is. Each species of bat makes, it, makes a unique uh, sound pattern or echolocation pattern. So this is an active bat detector. That means that somebody actually has to be out in the woods, you know, holding this, looking around, listening for bats, as opposed to a passive bat detector. So a passive bat detector is more like a camera trap. So if you've ever set out a, a camera or listened to scientists talk about setting cameras in the woods, they set them, they program them, and then they leave them. And that's exactly what we do with this kind of bat detector. We are able to program it to turn on at dusk, so when the sun starts going down, and then program it to turn off when the sun comes up because bats are nocturnal and most active at nighttime. And this sort of acts as like a camera trap for sound. We have this microphone attached and we can record every bat that flies by within range of this microphone in a particular night to figure out again, what kind of bats are in an area. We can identify what species of bats are flying by based on what they sound like, how many bats, um, the species diversity, how many different species are in an area. And uh, we can learn a lot about them. It's much less invasive to do acoustic monitoring like this as opposed to, you know, catching a bat and putting a transmitter on it. You know, this requires us to actually handle the bat and have rabies shots and have, you know, a lot of uh, different things in place. But it's really easy to put one of these out in the woods with this uh, specialized microphone to listen to the bats. So uh, those are some of my tools, some of the, the tricks of the trade for looking at bats. Um, I wanna take a look here uh, just to see what um, people are asking. Um, there are definitely a lot of um, information about bats uh, going on right now and uh, with what we're, what we're dealing with in the world. And I think one of the big things I, I just wanna share is that bats are so critically important to so many ecosystems around the world. You know, they, they are uh, pollinating plants, like I said before. Um, and when the bats go in and drink nectar, they're getting that pollen all over them and then they're going to their flower. They're acting just like a bee or just like a, a hummingbird and providing a very, very important service. Um, the agave plant, one of the primary pollinators of the agave plant is actually bats. Um, they're eating insects. Bats are providing billions, billions with a B, dollars worth of agricultural assistance just to uh, agricultural uh entities in the US alone. I mean, I don't even, I can't imagine the, the impact that they make worldwide. They eat so many insects that would decimate crops and uh, have really truly negative impacts on our, our food supplies. Um, they're uh, impacted really heavily by uh, pesticides. So it's, it's really important to be really mindful of the, the kind of pesticides and chemicals that are being sprayed in fields because bats can be uh, seriously harmed by them. Um, and bats are huge seed dispersers, uh, especially the fruit eating bats in uh, Central and South America and Africa and Asia. These bats can uh, ingest the fruit and uh, expel the seeds and within the forest ecosystems that they're flying around, those seeds can germinate and give life to the forest. Um, bats get a really negative rap for their ability to spread disease, which is true. They are uh, a vector of disease, but ultimately it's our decision to interact with the bats that spreads that disease. So, it's, it's really up to us to be very mindful of how important it is to respect wildlife and to, you know, uh, sustainably interact with our, our natural world instead of, uh, instead of, you know, having um, 
uh, interactions that can potentially harm us and are definitely harmful for wildlife. Um, I want to answer another question. I have a question that says, how can we help bats directly or indirectly? That is an amazing question. Um, one of the best ways you could actually help bats is to put up a bat house in your uh, backyard or your front yard or any property that you have. There are plans for making bat houses online. Um, two resources I actually have linked down in the description below are Bat Conservation International and the um, Merlin Tuttle's Bat Conservation. Both of those websites are excellent for learning how to um, help bats. Uh, you can directly support bat conservation by giving to places like Bat Conservation International and Merlin Tuttle's bats. Um, and there are also plans on Bat Conservation International for how to build your own bat house. So tons of people have bluebird houses or, you know, other types of houses. You can put a bat house in your own yard. It might take a long time for bats to actually come and roost there. But uh, bat houses are an amazing way that you can actually make a difference for bats in your local area. And then telling people how important bats are, are to our local ecosystems and uh, encouraging people to be mindful of their pesticide use or um, other things that might directly impact what the bats are eating like insects. Um, uh, I had somebody ask, can you recommend the best mode for identifying bats via an app? I actually don't know of any apps that identify bats. But uh, again, those two resources that I shared with you, Merlin Tuttle Bats and Bat Conservation International, um, which the websites for both of those are linked down below, I would say are the best resources you could find for um, learning about bats. They do have bat identification resources on those websites. Um, and then you could always look, look up your local extension agency, your local um, fish and wildlife organization and uh, reach out to somebody if you have a picture of a bat. But again, I would always recommend to not touch a bat. If, if you find a bat outside, if you find a bat on the ground, um, it could be sick. It's not guaranteed that it's sick, but uh, it's definitely best to not interact with them and uh, call a professional to, to handle that. Um, I wanna just leave you uh, with um, some thoughts. I'm so appreciative that you turned tuned into my uh, Earth Live session. There will be more um, Earth Live lessons after this, but um, I just want to encourage you that science can definitely be uh, a topic that is uh, overwhelming or scary to dive into, but studying science is so important for understanding our place in the natural world. There are mysteries and puzzles and so much information out there that we still have yet to learn. And we need more than ever people who are curious and passionate and want to know what it means to be, you know, a living being on this earth and, and coexist with, with all other life on this earth, that it's so important that we uh, study science and validate science and, and just support scientists and the work that's going on. Um, I uh, think, let me see if there's any other questions. Um, I don't see any other questions right now, but again, I just uh, thank you so much for tuning into my session. Um, I would love to get in contact with you if you wanted to reach out. My, um, I'm on Instagram and Twitter, at Alex of the Wild. Um, I love doing science communication and uh, chatting with people about their questions about anything related to science. And um, I just, again, I really appreciate you turning, tuning in and uh, have a great day. Tune in to more uh, Earth Live sessions. They will be uh, happening later today. Thank you so much to Lizzie Daily Wild for uh, getting all of this set up. I really appreciated being here and thank you so much. Have a good day.